At the same time that the most well-known of acting teachers, Konstantin Stanislavski, was redefining and modernizing acting, author Marcel Proust wrote about small pastries, Le Petite Madeleine, whose taste triggered a sense memory of his childhood. And over a hundred years later, a real-life Madeleine would sprinkle a secret ingredient of her own eccentric spontaneity into a recipe for actors' self-discovery. Recipe for a Madeleine Butter, eggs, sugar, flour Recipe for the actor Trust, belief, will My name is Madeleine Louise Hélène Thornton Sherwood. I was born in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I've always wanted to be an actor since I was four, when I was in a church play with my mother. Through her career, my friend and mentor, actor, teacher, activist, and director, Madeline Sherwood, has been in over 18 Broadway shows and many movies. She has worked with some of the most influential actors, playwrights, and directors of the past 50 years. She was a familiar face to me as a child when she co-starred with Sally Field in the hit television series, The Flying Nun. Throughout her career, Madeline has remained true to her Canadian roots, appearing in plays and leading workshops across Canada. Don't you try to kid us, Maggie. May. She's not kidding you. How can she have a child by you when you hey, won't will even you keep quiet? We occupy the next room. The walls between are soundproof. We hear the nightly pleading and the nightly refusal. Sister woman, not everybody makes as much noise about love as you do. Brick, I never thought that you would stoop to her level. First saved message. Miriam, it's Michelle Parsons calling from the actor's studio in New York. I have uh, no problem with your doing this, of course. When we get the group of actors together, we can give you a call. Since it's something Madeline would like to do, it sounds okay with me. So uh, we'll be in touch. I wanted to be an actor, right? I didn't know how to be an actor. I didn't know what you did to be an actor. So I married a very nice man and I had a beautiful baby. That was a substitute at the time. However, I think I probably had what today is called postpartum depression. And before I knew it, my husband said, you should go to a hospital. It's in Hartford, Connecticut. Well, that's where I went. My brother took me down on the plane. We went to Hartford, Connecticut. And my doctor said, you know, they want to give you a lobotomy. I said, what can I do? I don't want to have a lobotomy. And Dr. Gray said, well, the back gate is never locked. And I said, thank you, Dr. Gray. And I stood up. And that was my goodbye. The gates, they were open. So I kept walking, and that's how I got to New York City. This was my theater. It might have been one of Captain Hampton. A lot of memories come up here, eh? A lot of memories. Paul Newman and Geraldine Page, Rip Torn, me, lots of other people whose names I've forgotten, unfortunately. <laughs> I should not have forgotten them, but I have. Here I am at the actor studio, but I'm going to do a a workshop here. It's funny to be over 80 and starting all over again in a sense. Not acting, I'm too deaf, but I can manage my workshops with help. For decades, actors of all levels and professional statures have auditioned, observed, worked at the actor's studio. This is, for me, a very holy place. I've been a member since 1958, and I auditioned twice. 
The first time I heard about the actor's studio was through Lee Grant. But what I like is to This is Lee Grant we're talking to. Us today. She said, there's this new thing starting. We're calling it the actor's studio, and there are a lot of people there. There's a young guy there named Jimmy Dean, and occasionally Marlon drops in. And Lee Strasberg is running it. They're looking for some more people. Why don't you come over? And I said, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think I'd, I'd enjoy that. And I didn't go. Then Al Salmi asked me to audition with him. And Al got in, and I didn't. And I could not understand how he got in, because I never could hear him. <laughs> and I wasn't deaf then. But he talked like this. He really did mumble. In those days, all these young guys really were mumbling. Mumble, mumble, mumble. And I was speaking very clearly. <laughs> but he got in anyway. And after that, I thought, I don't need the actor's studio. And then I got cast by Kazan in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. During rehearsals, he said to me, are you a member of the actor's studio? I said, no, I'm not. I auditioned and they didn't let me in. He said, oh, well, we've got to do something about that, don't we? Then Sweet Bird of Youth came up, and I guess I did audition around that time, that's true. Kazan obviously sensed something in me that said I was very anxious to please, that I was a raw actor at that point. And um, that's why he felt I needed the studio, and he was right. Lee Strasberg always stressed that an actor's instrument must be kept in tune. Musicians tune up, singers work their scales, and dancers their plies. And too often, we actors wait for a role to motivate us. No matter what day job claims our time in order to eat or to pay the rent, we must keep our actor's instrument mind, body, soul, in tune, so that we will be ready when that roll comes along. Face. <laughs> to understand and learn and do together. And of course, at that time, a lot of people thought we were insane. And I felt very privileged. As a matter of fact, I became really quite impossible, I suppose, for some people. For the love of my life, I became impossible for him because he wasn't that crazy about Lee. And I was going home every Tuesday and Friday after sessions and saying, Lee said this and Lee does it and Lee and Lee and Lee. And my partner said, you know what? I don't care what Lee said. <laughs> Lee was quite gentle with me for quite a while, and then he got real tough. <laughs> he had me do far, far more private moments and sense memories. He let me come to his private classes with no pay, <laughs> and I went to his private classes for several years, as well as the actor's studio. Lee said to me once, Madeline, you are an excellent, conventional actor. I was devastated by that remark. Excellent. Conventional. You want to be called conventional? Who wants to be called conventional? Sally Field sent me an interview from New York Times, and she did mention me and say that I had taken her to the actor's studio and that she had studied with Lee. My real story of her, where I couldn't get her to go for two years, and, and finally I told her I'd audition with her. There are some of us who can learn 
how to act, and some who will try from here to doomsday. They may even get rolled, but they are not really coming from the gut. You know, I mean, it's true of Marlon, right? I mean, nobody really taught him to act, that's for sure. But when the actor studio first started, he probably picked up one or two things from Lee. But he quarreled with Lee anyway, you know, he fought him. But he didn't stay there very long. People think of him as being the stalwart at the actor studio, but he was there for maybe a few sessions, that's all. Well, with Lee's help, <coughs> found the way to unlock my special talent. And that's what you people can and will do here at the actor studio. Unlock your special talent that nobody else possesses. No one else has what you have. You are just born. Kazan was the best director of live theater, bar none. His great genius with actors is that he very, very seldom talked to an actor out loud in front of the whole company. I do remember him saying, in Cat, how do you feel about May, Sister Woman, yourself? And I said, well, I feel that she thinks that she's doing exactly what Big Daddy wants. I don't think of her as a mean creature or a caricature at all. Kazan said, yeah, I think you're on the right direction there, and I'm very glad that you said she's not a caricature. Go from there and bring your own heart into the character. And there had been times when I was with other directors when you could tell that they were steering us to be mean, you know, not going opposite. But of course, when the movie came out and I would be walking down Broadway and people would say, oh, I know you have Madeline Sherwood. Oh, look, can I take a picture? Oh, I just hated you as me. I just hated you. And I was supposed to say, obviously, thank you very much. And remember that for me, May was a good person. Keeping your private work, much of which you do here, your private work private. I don't want to go to the hospital. Why not? Because he's dying and I don't want to... I don't want to see him die. I guess most of you know about emotional memory. And it's very difficult work. Anybody ever die close to you? Yes. Are you all right with this? Yes. Recent or ways back? Both. Pick something that's at least five years, seven years, ten years old, so that it's not too immediate. In a sense, you distance yourself, and on the other, the other hand, get closer. Emotional stuff doesn't overtake the whole of the scene and it doesn't become for the public. This is all about you. Because what you're trying to do is give them an experience. It's not about your personal life, actually speaking, but we have to be able to learn to use our personal life, and that's what makes a special act. You don't have to take something big or momentous because that's really being private in public. And that is the time that you have to wrestle with the fact it's too scary, it's too much, I'm afraid, I don't want them to see me as I really am. Generally speaking, it would be best to do a private moment for yourself before you attempt to do one of the characters. Lucy! When you watch two TVs, chop your toenails, stock yourself with chocolates, and read a magazine all at the same time. I already seen the movie. <laughs> Happy Easter, sugar. Absolutely divine. Heavenly. You're solid. But every time you use this part of you, it's full. 
Like it's coming from your feet all the way up and your arms go out with it. What is there to say? What is there to say? <coughs> did this. Fuck. Check me in? No. Say a real thought. Mm -hmm. The real thought is I can't believe I can't fucking get these lines. Okay, now say a lot. Anyone. Anyone. It seems like I've buried so many people lately. Did you ever see Night of the Iguana? I know Probably it. the movie. Yeah. Well, on the play version, because Betty was so famous, she would come on and she'd get a standing ovation. I knew that when they announced came that Betty Davis was not available that night, and they were very sorry, and Madeline Sherwood would be, and if they wished to, they could get their money back and come back mm -hmm. another time. And so I walked on, and the audience were still in the process of deciding whether they wanted to leave or whether they wanted to stay. And so they were talking a lot. They were shifting, they were moving, some were on the way out. Finally, I walked down front like this to them, and, and you know, she had this shirt on that was down to here. And I said as Maxine, the character, you make up your mind. Either sit down or get out. At which point, this couple was a fairly old couple, and they went, oh, and they both sat on top of somebody. But that broke the ice because the rest of the audience laughed. It was wonderful, and it, it broke the ice for me because from there on in, I sailed through. Explore possibilities at the studio as fully and thoroughly as you can, and elsewhere. Go to other places. Don't think that one person has all the answers. Lee didn't. No one teacher. Stella didn't. Aunt Sandy Miser didn't. But all of those people had wonderful answers also. Hello? Professor Smith? You can't beat Boss Finley by making speeches about God or by heckling him about chastity. Because the boss has a patent on that jazz. He's a low-down hillbilly. And it takes a hillbilly to cut down a hillbilly. And that's me. Uh-uh. <laughs> Don't bother about my name. You just appear at that rally tonight and ask him one question. Why did Boss Finley make Dr. Scudder chief of staff at the hospital? Uh, it's just too much. It's just too much. Is that bad? Is he bad? I mean, I don't know what the hell good I'm doing. Certainly the basis of the actor's studio was to get to your own personal stuff. And I found a lot of ways. Of course, it was easier for me in a way because it was a much more sympathetic part when I played Miss Lucy in Sweet Bird of Youth. I mean, I liked Paul anyway, so that was easy. But I had an envy of Paul and Geraldine. And I wanted my part to be bigger, and I wanted to be the star. But there was something involved that I was so happy to see Chance Wayne back again and wanted to protect him. Chance? Chance, hi, Steppenway. Hey, hey, Miss Lucy. Oh, honey, you used to be so attractive, I couldn't stand it. <laughs> and I've been in that position often in my own life, where I needed to and wanted to protect somebody, and did. What's in the pill, honey? Well, when you are having fun, this makes you have even more. Are you having fun? Baby, I'm having a ball. Honey, I'm an expert at pretending to have fun. You are having a wake, not a ball. Mr. Wayne. It's a kernel that I found for myself, and then I knew that that's who I was using, but I wasn't every minute of the time, because that's when we actors get into trouble. Yeah. It slows us up, it slows our brain up, because we're doing two things at once, you know? We're saying, ah, this is not uh, Bill, this is, uh, this is my love, John, you know? And that just, it's, it's, I think that's very bad. You know? But you have to learn that process, and it's not easy. You know how these people are. Who are these people? These people, these fucking people over there. Who, who, who? What the are servants. They? The what? The servants. Okay. The muckrakers, the leaf rakers. <laughs> Words have to come out of you. Because yes. at the moment they're half, half done because I'm yelling them at you, of course, you know? And you're trying very hard to do what I want and remember what you did do and what you did work on. And it's a very confusing situation, most certainly. I'm eternally happy that I found a way to go to New York 
1949, September 1949, the 40s and 50s were the last of the real glory days of drama, you know, on Broadway. But of course, everybody, when they get old, they look back and they think the time that they were young and hot and getting roles and stuff, of course they were the best days, right? Of course they were. And all I know is at the end of the day, I have not become a big star, but I have got enough money to live on. And I did that all from whatever career I had. Here I am lying on my hundred year old bed on my mom's quilt. And one of the things that I'm discovering for the hundred thousandth time is to let go and pay attention to my body and let each part of me Relax. Recipe for a Madeleine. Butter, eggs, sugar, flour. Recipe for an actor. Trust, belief, will, and a secret unknown, perhaps magical ingredient.